Yo, yo, Spectre here. Today, I'm going to show you how to turn 2D icons into 3D icons using Adobe Illustrator. First things first, open up Illustrator, then go to new file. And then here you can use any canvas size. I'm going to use a regular 1920 by 1080 P. And then down here, I'm going to select RGB mode and then on raster effects on high and then hit create. Now, the first thing we're going to do is go over to window and then make sure that 3D and materials are selected. And it's going to pan over here to this right column and then go to window again and then go down to where it says image trace. Now, if you don't have this over here selected Pathfinder, go back to window and then look for it over here. It says Pathfinder and then it should appear. Now we do need a 2D icon pack and you can get these from anywhere from Google images or wherever. I will leave a link in the description where you can find specific icons and that way it's a little bit easier for you. Now the first one I'm going to start with is OBS. I'll just drag it over here and this one's going to be a little bit easier to explain some of the ways you can do image tracing. So first I'll make a duplicate control C control V. And I'll just leave this just in case if anything goes wrong. Then I'll select on this one. And then here you can select image trace. And then here where it says auto detect, select it. And then you can scroll down to where it says silhouette. And this is going to actually make a vectorized version of the original file. And then I'll just click on expand. Now the original image didn't have a white background. And so if you select this one, you can see it's the same way. So we're going to have to make a specific background for this. So if you pan over here to the left where it says rectangle, you can right click and then select ellipse. And then we're going to pretty much do a trace over this icon here. So left select and then hold shift. And we're going to want to match the same size as this original icon. So here it's completely covering it. So select it and then select fill and then choose white. Now you can right click here and then select arrange and then send to back. Now we have this image with the original white icon. So select both and then do control and the letter G that way it groups together. And by the way, to zoom in and out, choose hit alt. And then with the mouse wheel, go in and out. And then if you hit the middle mouse button, you can pretty much pan over around like this. Now, if you pan over here, you can see that it's pretty much good to go. Now let's resize this a little bit bigger. So select it on the edge and then hold shift. That way, when you drag out, it doesn't deform or distort. Then go to 3D and materials and then select inflate. And then now if you go down here to the position, you can pretty much play around with this. And then you can also hit inflate for both sides. That way it has an equal side on both. Now, if you go over here to where it says materials, go down and then here on roughness, bring it all the way to zero. And then you can go back to object and you can play around with the depth. And then here you can change the perspective as well, which is kind of like a fisheye lens in a way. Now, are we happy the way it's positioned already? Go over to where it says lighting. And here you can add some shadow. And you can change the position of the sun or the light that's being used. And then change the rotation as well. And the height as well. And you can play around with the intensity of how strong you want the light to be. And also the softness. And then here as well with the lighting, there's two intensities. And then now when you're ready to render, go over here to this column where it says render settings. And then here select ray tracing and then the quality set it to high and then select render. Now it may take some time depending on your computer. Sometimes it takes seconds. Sometimes it can take minutes. Now here, um, you can see that there's a lot of white going on. 
and if you don't like any of the intensity go back to lighting so I think the intensity was up here now it looks good to me now I can delete this here out of the way now here I can do the dominoes one so I'll drag it over now here let's resize it now let's make a duplicate you can do alt and then just drag it out and then here you can go over here to image trace and this one's going to be a little bit different compared to the OBS one because this one was just using the color black and then here you're using blue, red, and white. So here where it says auto detect, select it and then go down to silhouettes again. Then here just click expand. Now if you go over here to the left, you're going to see this thing called direct selection. So select it and then here just select only on one of them so you can just click here on the canvas and then click on one of the opposite ends of the domino and then hit i and this is going to give you the eyedropper select tool so you can hover over and then select it now sometimes you might not get the color you want that's because sometimes it doesn't fully know which color it is and also because i did hear that adobe is cutting some of the colors such as pantone colors because of a add-on that you gotta buy so if this happens you can also just go here towards this fill and you can just select one of these colors so i think that one looks fine you can also go to here to the rgb and then just select all of the red which I think that's better. Then go over here to this other domino and then hit I, see if it, color, if it copies the same color. And this one, it did seem to copy it. Now we are missing the outline. So let's go back here to where the ellipse tool is. Right click and then select rectangle select tool. Then let's try to copy the same shape here. So select and then hit V. And then you can also change the rotation here. Now we can change the opacity to kind of see what we're doing. And just try to copy the same shape of it. Now here, if you look closely, there's going to be some little dots. And if you select it, just drag down and you can round the corners. Now it's pretty much the same shape. So try to align it here. Then go back to the opacity and then bring it up. And then here on the fill, just change it to white. Then right click and then go over here to where it says arrange and then send to back. Now select all of them and then do control G. Now we're ready to make this a 3D material. Then go to 3D material, go to object and then hit inflate. And then here, you can change the depth and then inflate on both sides. And you can mess around with some of the positioning. Now I go over to materials and then go to roughness, bring it down and then go to lighting. And you can mess around with the intensity and the rotation of the lighting and then shadows. Now when you're ready, just go over here to render settings and then ray tracing again. And then here where it says high quality and then render. Now let's drag this here and we can delete this other one. Now we can do another one. And um, this one let's do on the Spotify because I think this one is a good demonstration for you to watch. So I'll pan over over here. Then let's make it small. I just want to match the sizing. So here I can delete this older one, control C, control V, and then I can go back to image trace and then here auto detect and then the silhouettes. And here, this is the part I wanted to show you. So here on the threshold, if you start bringing it back, it's going to show those curved lines. And then you want to get it just enough to where the threshold shows them. And then here, just click expand and I'll leave it as is. Then I'll go back here to the ellipse tool and it's already selected on the on this shape. So I'll just make a duplicate of this one here. So left select and then hold shift. 
then press V and then see if it matches the circle and it does and then here you can select it then go to properties if you don't see this window here then with the eyedropper you can copy this color and this one it doesn't show the same green unfortunately so I can just select it and then go to fill and I can just make it myself if not you can use uh, one of the CMYK colors and I think this one looks better yeah so instead of using the CMY it just went back to RGB and then just brought up the green all the way up and then you can also right click and then send arrange and then send to back and then I can just line this up together now I can select oh, whoops I can select both and then hit control and the letter G now I can go back to 3d and materials go to object hit inflate and then I can start messing around here with the rotation and go to materials and then on roughness bring it down go to lighting I'll select uh, let's see I think the standard is fine and then hit ray tracing high and I'm not doing the shadows on this one and I think that one looks pretty badass I think it looks better uh, with this green than the other one now I'll do the time lapse And here it is guys, I did uh, OBS, I did Domino's, Discord, Bitcoin, Steam, McDonald's, Blender, Spotify. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Also, this was an updated version of my original how to turn 2D icons into 3D icons, except I didn't do, you know, company logos. I was using my own uh, files, but I feel like this was a little bit better to demonstrate and kind of catch your attention. And I think it's pretty cool. Please make sure to follow my social medias. It is at spectre.3d. And also, please follow my Discord. I do help you guys out if you guys have any questions or either a member can help you. If you have any suggestions, please leave it in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching.